morning and welcome to the Senior Hour, which is sponsored by Santa Clarita In-Home Care and Advanced Audiology. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Doria, on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. This is a show for, about, and by seniors, giving information to enhance their quality of life. And our guest this morning is Linda Davies. She's the Executive Director of the Domestic Violence Center of the Santa Clarita Valley. Welcome, Welcome. my love. Thank you. It's good to see you since we've seen a lot of each other lately. Yeah, we have. (laughs) Yes, we have. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's a good thing, Barbara. (laughs) Yes, yes. And how was everybody? Did everybody have a nice weekend? Mm -hmm. How was yours, birthday girl? Oh, wow. (laughs) It was wonderful. Absolutely Mm -hmm. wonderful. Girl, my year, girl, yeah, my girlfriends older. took me out to lunch, and I'm yeah. losing an earring. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, my kids. Um, my son took us, took my daughter and I to dinner with with Russ, and um, because she had a birthday on Wednesday, last oh, Wednesday, right. and I had one last Friday. Yeah, she was 57, and I was 79. Mm-hmm. Isn't that, isn't both that of you wonderful? youngsters yeah. still. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. It's so good to be alive. Yes. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> yes. I hope everybody gets there and beyond. That's right. Because I right. intend to go way beyond. Got it? Yeah, we, I'm we sure already you know that. We know that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so what is going on at the Domestic Violence Center? Uh, well, this yes, month I. is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Yes. And we have had quite a few events um, with um, educating the community. We've done mm-hmm. a clothesline project, which is, of course, the project that um, kind of started in the 90s where women, it came after the AIDS walk, you know, where people were mm-hmm. doing the AIDS quilts. Yes, and people decided that. to... Um, uh, because women met at clotheslines and laundromats to really talk about That's domestic right. violence, um, they decided that it would be best to draw their stories, maybe for the mm-hmm. first time, on a T-shirt. And so that T-shirt, uh, the clothesline project has gone across the country. It's been at different places. COC um, works really closely with us. We, and so does the Zontas. They work closely with us. Um, we also do a little thing with the Z Club also for the clothesline project. So they had it at Saugus High School as well, so to raise awareness. So that was sort of mm-hmm. how we kicked off Domestic Violence Month with an event at Savia. And then we have had a, we had a resource fair out at College of the Canyons. And then... Um, my outreach staff actually, for the first time, presented something called an, outs- uh, an upstander bystander uh, curriculum that we're going to be doing again um, coming up in March. Um, Wait a minute. What is an upstander bystander okay. program? Okay. Most of us with domestic violence or with any kind of issues a lot of times are we're bystanders. We observe what's going observe, on around right. us and we don't stand up. Okay. That's right. So we really want to teach people, teach kids, teach everyone to how to safely become an upstander. So that if you're in an apartment building and you hear a lot of fighting going on, that you actually will call the sheriffs and let them know what's happening. You know, mm-hmm. that, and the sheriffs will respond because that's something that, you know, they're, they're really working hard on making Santa Clarita a safer place around domestic violence as well. If you see something happening on the street, you don't necessarily have to break it up, which we would recommend you not doing no, so no. that you can remain safe. But, I mean, I've just yelled at somebody one time saying the sheriffs are coming and mm-hmm. the guy leaves the girl alone and walks away. I mean, it's, sometimes it's as simple as that. Well, I it, think people get really scared and they think that what they have to do is that they have to, like, go in and break it up, mm-hmm. but they don't. They really just have to say, I'm noticing what's happening. I'm about to, I've called the sheriffs. They're coming to get you, and you need to leave her alone. And so mm-hmm. the other thing is we're trying to we're working with youth also in the schools around that too, um, where they can learn when they have friends. Another thing is also you talk about sexual assault, kids going to parties and seeing their friends getting really drunk or say their girlfriend getting really drunk, um, and being able to instead of having her leave with that guy, you know, maybe walk up and say to her, hey, let's go back to the dorm together. Or let's go back to your apartment. So the girls mm-hmm. take care of each other when that happens, mm-hmm. or friends take care of friends. Um, and that would be an upstander. You know, not just letting yes. something happen that you know could have a disastrous result, but mm-hmm. really being yeah. able to. And so we do some training on that, how to do that, how to safely do it. And we started that first at COC um, during the month of October as part of what we were doing for Domestic Violence Awareness Month I out there. Knew, you know, going back Back to the clothesline project, uh-huh. I can understand where women, when they're out 
in the backyard, right. hanging up their clothes yeah. on the clothesline, which still happens, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. I mean, I have a clothesline outside okay. <laughs> that mm-hmm. I hang up white clothes. Okay. And you have to do it. The yeah. sunshine needs to get yeah. into them, you know. <laughs> that doesn't happen when you do it in a dryer. Mm. But I can, getting back to that, I can understand how women would commiserate with each other mm-hmm. outside away from everybody right you know right because neighborhoods are close right you know backyards even though you do have the block walls you can still talk, talk over, over. Yeah, and but, yeah. i'm sorry but laundromats too were also a big place where it yeah, started it's hard to call it a laundromat project <laughs> no, it's, yeah, yes, it's very yeah, much hard to yeah. call it a laundromat. I <laughs> like that, though. Hey, but, we'll figure that one out. You know, I, I, I worry about our seniors, and, you know, they, there are problems that are going on. And even at the senior center, people congregate. Uh, the seniors are there. And even during lunchtime, they could find that uh, one of someone they're eating lunch with could be having a problem. And that should be recognized. That should not, you know, the upstander should... St- come out and say, hey, there's a problem here as well. So mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be clothesline or laundromat, right. you know, senior center or wherever else, church, right. that we might congregate. We hear these things, and you don't want to spread a rumor. Right. But if you know that somebody has a, a bruise on them, uh, that could be problematic. And, Absolutely. And, you know, to ask about that, I, don't, I think it's fairly innocuous. I think everyone should become an upstander. I mean, Mm -hmm. I really do believe that we, because domestic violence is not a family issue. That's what people like to think it is. It's a family issue. It's a community issue. You know, there's millions spent on people losing work. There's millions spent in medical bills. Um, You think about the children, you know, 15 million children a year witness domestic violence in our country alone. Um, Those kids are going to grow up knowing that that's that's the only thing they know. It's a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. And And it carries on. It carries on. It carries Especially on. Especially in the young man goes, you know, as a child, you might see that occurring and think that's a normal occurrence of life and that you're going to propagate that. Absolutely. So it needs to be uh, taken and checked. Right. Absolutely. So the more we can talk about it openly and the more that people aren't, I think what happens too, and we've recently been looking at that with our schools, is that, you know, a lot of parents may not, I mean, right now we talk easily about drugs and alcohol. You know, Mm -hmm. we were able to clearly have those conversations now. I mean, I think that's taken a long time, but we're doing it because we're seeing the problems. But I think domestic violence still isn't coming out in to the open as much as it needs to and that we it's people don't want to have those discussions or have their kids part of those discussions because they worry that then maybe you know well first of all they think that domestic violence is only physical okay and it's not only physical mm-hmm. the most harm that's got done is emotional, emotional. abuse it's emotional psychological. it's psychological yes. it's um, sexual it is financial and those mm-hmm. are the things that stay and hurt and ruin somebody's life and those are those are that is elder abuse it's definitely elder abuse i do have the elder abuse hotline too in case you we want to give it out today oh, yeah. i have it it's it's actually 877 477 3646 again the elder abuse hotline is 877 477 3647 now there is a difference because wait a minute 3647 yep Okay. Oh, three, three six, six four six. six. Okay, that's what yeah. I thought. Did I say seven? Wait a minute. Yeah, you did. I'm saying it again, everybody. So listen closely. I'm I'm kind of looking at it from an angle. <laughs> All right. So it's eight seven seven four seven seven three six four six. Very good. Okay, three, yes. six, four, six. Barb, That's right. good for catching that on me, girl. <laughs> well, I wrote six, and I thought, wait a minute, did I miss What did she just say? Am okay. I getting old? Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> no gosh, no. Look at you did it for me. You're older than me, and you took care of that one. <laughs> All right. All right. So, I mean, that's an important piece. We had somebody call recently from a local agency the other day with a woman who was 71 years old who needed support. And um, at that moment in time, she wasn't interested in doing a restraining order. She wasn't interested in going to shelter. So really what she needed was the agency needed to call the elder abuse hotline. There really wasn't anything else that we could do for that. There should be somebody who goes in and looks at her living situation and kind of helps her get settled um, and see what they can do for her. But that cry for help going to a hotline is later down the line. And what we need to, there, there are clues as a physician. I know that uh, people tell me certain symptoms that they're having that are clues to me, but I also observe 
things that are about them uh, on their physical exam that are clues to me. And then because I do house calls, I see that things are going on in their house that might be clues to me. So it's not just somebody calling a hotline. That's late. Yeah, you're right. Earlier, earlier, there are many things that you know we can be aware of as we're uh, trying to be upstanding and make good observations. Not like I said, spread rumors, but we're trying to make sure that patient is content in their in their uh, home and uh, in their surroundings and not being abused in any way. Right. And so, what would you? What are some of the things that you look for, though? I mean, I, I know for isolation is a big thing that we would be concerned yeah, about. Yeah, they retract themselves right. emotionally. Right. Right. That all of a sudden, you know, they're 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 out there doing things and suddenly you see them even body language wise retracted they seem afraid they right. seem worried they're not willing to go out as much as they used to that's right uh, that's one of the key things right mm -hmm. if if that woman or man right is very very active right and then all of a sudden is not any longer active you might think wait a minute something's going on right and it could quite well be domestic, right, domestic violence, violence. Mm -hmm. and, I, and i also think for the people that are that are housebound that people who deliver the meals or people who may go in and do house visits really need to have a conversation with them about how's it going with their caretakers their caregivers because i do think that that's that's one of the problems that we hear a lot about is the fact that they're afraid to say that something's going on mm -hmm. they're afraid to say that you know somebody's controlling their money or somebody's not letting them call their family or get involved you know back maybe even out in the community if they can get out at some points and and that um, is a conversation that somebody who is kind of like a, a somebody who cares for them but mm -hmm. may not be giving them the care in the home needs to have that discussion with them because there is a lot where that happens um, and they're afraid to say anything for fear that they'll be left alone many of the home delivered drivers like you Barbara uh, talk to the uh, uh, people you were bringing food to. That's correct. And Bruce Cerati, who just left here a moment ago, he's a home-delivered meal driver, and he found someone rubbing their chest. And that in itself, on his, on his delivery, said, what is wrong? And prompted questions and where the patient actually was having a heart attack oh, and wow. they had to call yeah. 911. But yeah. if he didn't ask that, if he wasn't aware of the situation and the person, it would never have happened, saved the person's life. That, well, so these are yeah, all the things that, you know, are contact necessary. we have with people who are in isolation yeah. uh, to a certain degree, um, but not seen a lot in the community, uh, but are giving us those signs, not just the body language, but so many other things that they can are saying to us through how they look, how they talk, how they mm -hmm. sense things, how they're um, being involved. There's so many things that, you know, we give us those clues that help us out uh, making sure that everybody is content where they are. And I think the other thing we uh, that people have to think about too is that you know the elderly bruise easily. I mean I bruise oh, easily sure, sure. now too. <laughs> but I mean and so sometimes somebody might go in and see a bruise and think oh that's just a simple little sure. thing like they bumped into the doorway or they you know but but they need to ask about that just like you would with Absolutely. a child. You know when a child goes to child care you really mm -hmm. want the people there observing the body and being able to call a parent and say hey how did that happen? So to be able mm -hmm. to say to a caregiver how did she get this bruise or how did he get that bruise and kind of under kind of paying attention to how they respond. Mm -hmm. be Absolutely. Right because if they respond with like like a, they don't want to talk about it, or actually look like they're covering up. Then or you might that, have a that's concern. That's a HIPAA violation. I'm not telling you that. Yeah, right, 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 <laughs> right, right. Where we've got to be really to help the person out, to help our person that we care about. We really have to be able to ask those tough questions of the people who are caring for them and of them themselves. So I think it's very, very important. Yeah, not all of us are astute in, you know, reading body language. I mean, we there's uh, implications and you know looking at someone yeah we could get something that is absolutely not there and go down this wild trail of distrust and pointing fingers when it's it's not there and that's not only embarrassing but you know a violation of somebody's trust so but we mm -hmm. so we have to be careful but when you get to know a person and you have interaction with them you know after a while you get to understand where they're coming from how they are what they're saying and the importance of things and the inflection in their voices the how they're holding themselves the look on their face mm -hmm. uh, you know sometimes 
that awareness and that previous interaction makes a huge difference for us to then say, nah, I'm not moving forward on this, but to others to say, some of the upstanders will say, yeah, yeah this is important, you know, I'm, asking, I'm gonna ask a few more questions before I let this go. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely, absolutely. So anyway, so we're telling people out there to uh, really pay attention. Right? Pay attention Absolutely. to what's going on around them. Pay Absolutely. attention to what's happening with the people that they care about. And even sometimes with the people that you just see even on, um, like you walk past, you know? Like maybe pay a little attention to what's going on when you pass them. If they seem aggressive with one another, maybe you take a minute and you just kind of look, you know? And then you, uh, people have actually stood up and said, hey, it's not okay to treat somebody like that. You know, yeah, just kind of a right. reminder. It's not okay to treat somebody right. like that. You know, if the person is feeling so intimidated by the power and control of this person they're with, they may, they're, they've stopped being able to say that. So it's helpful sometimes for us to look at what, what human beings deserve. You know, what's the respect and love that we all deserve? And that's with everybody that we see. I know we think about it a lot when we see kids in stores. You'll always hear, especially because I worked in childcare for so long, that I, I hear people would always say, I heard this mother talking to her child so poorly in the, in the store. I had to step up and kind of do something. So we, we take care of certain people in our society. Yeah. But then there are people we don't take care of, you know? And I think sometimes the elderly can be one of those. And I think also in marriages and love relationships, we think that's a private thing. We don't have to get involved with that. But What's, It was interesting when you're talking about elderly and, and children. I was in a restaurant oh, many years ago. I was in the restaurant eating lunch with a girlfriend and across the aisle, there was an older woman and a younger woman. And this younger woman was really telling this older woman off in very not nice language. And I, th I thought to myself, wait a minute, that sounds like a hotline call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I got up and I said, excuse me, I said, haven't I met you before somewhere? And I carried on that conversation right, yeah. with her, which stopped the harassment and the haranguing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a great because idea. It, well, I, you know, I had been through the hotline training, and this was many years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I, I heard it, and I looked around to find out where all this harsh language was coming from, and I happened to turn around a little bit behind me at the table that was across the aisle, and the more I listened, the more I thought, uh-oh, I've got to go in here somehow and do something. And that's when I went up to her and said, excuse me, haven't we met somewhere before? And it stopped it dead. Yeah, yeah, what a great idea. Just it to kind of, it um, dead. Yeah. So that kind of interaction, if you see that going on, do it. Yeah. No, I think and that's, that's a, very a good, good that's interjection. Good yeah. Excuse me, don't I know you from somewhere? Haven't I seen you? Or I don't remember your name, but I've met you someplace, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very, uh, it's very... What is it? N it's benign. It's not going to... That's right. Yeah, it's, you wouldn't think the woman who was doing the um, abusive language wouldn't think anything that you were trying to sort of stop that. They wouldn't right. hold that person responsible after you left because right. you were crying but out. But They were crying it. out for help. But it, it stopped, stopped it. it immediately. Right. Yeah. And then their food came and our food came and so it kind of smoothed, it's o smoothed yeah. itself over. Yeah. No, that I think that's really, really helpful to think about, that there are ways that we can interject without pointing the finger, but just kind of coming in as, and breaking kind of a pattern that's going on right. or, or just relieving the pressure that's going on by just something like you said, Barbara, just, hey, hey, don't I know you? Haven't I met you before? You look so familiar mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. yeah but, the, you know, the question then becomes when they leave and get in the car and go home, is that going to rev itself back up again? And that was what you would be fearful for. Well, what, it could be, could you be. know, but there's no way of knowing. Our, we know, we don't know that. Yeah. But it stopped it right there. Right. You, you know, when I go out with my mom, my mom can't hear. Okay. And we tried the hearing aids and things like that. So, you know, when I speak to her, I'm speaking in uh, decibels like a lot of yeah. higher than, than normal, but I'm not yelling at her, but she just can't hear, and I lean always toward her so she can hear me, but sometimes that could be meant, thought by some to think, ah, you know, he's yelling that's at her, but true. you know, by what I'm talking to her about, they'll know that I'm not. Right, well, that's what I was thinking. But yeah. the fact is, they might think that, and people have different interpretations, so... Uh, um, yeah, I think I think you can tell by the words sometimes that they're saying. By the words, and yeah, it that, helps that a lot. if it's critical of the person sitting across from them, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that that's the sad part that happens. Yeah, sometimes. I think it, you you really you you need to really keep your eyes and ears aware. 
Yes. Eyes open and ears unplugged. Yes. So to yeah. speak. <laughs> <laughs> because you sometimes, maybe in many occasions, can stop something that might be continuing. Right. You know? Right. And give people a reason to stop. And we have a reason to stop now because we have to take a break. Yeah. Right. Good Isn't job, that good? Barbara. That Isn't was that a smooth good? segue. Yes. <laughs> I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.